JMU pulls out of the lawsuit with the NCAA. It's Locked on Sunbelt. You are Locked on Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back to another edition of Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. Today's episode brought to you by Price Picks. Go to pricepicks.com slash lockdown college and use code lockdown college for a first deposit match of up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, uh, very odd situation. Gonna, I was going to start with the bowl games. I was just going to kind of go over all the teams that are in the bowl games and talk about the bowl games and 12 teams could be in a bowl game. But Shane Metlin breaking the news and JMU releasing a statement, very, very strange. So let's recap and, and catch up to where we were, right? So heading into heading into last week, there was one last, last dash effort that AMG, JMU went through <clears throat> to secure a waiver to qualify for the Sunbelt Championship and therefore uh, be eligible for a major bowl, all right? Uh, they had the two-year waiver process, or some people will tell you it's a one-year waiver process, and they thought with the help of the Sun Belt that they wouldn't have to worry about the second year. Uh, they went through the waiver process in April. They were denied say la vie at the time, right? Because up until last week, or maybe the week before, the uh, JMU had done nothing. It was over as, as far as they were concerned. Then one last gasp effort to try and get eligible uh, and that was denied, I think, late Wednesday, night, Thursday. Uh, and they just said all the committees just agreed with each other that JMU needs to sit out for two years. So all while this was going on, the Virginia uh, Attorney General is threatening a lawsuit that apparently they were going through when they got denied. And that's what this week has been about. And, of course, it's a holiday week. I mean, I thought they were going to, like, do the lawsuit, like, last Saturday or file a lawsuit on Saturday. I don't know how you do that. You know, everything's closed on a Saturday, federally speaking. Uh, but whatever. All right. They were moving forward with a lawsuit. And so far, we've seen the NCAA kind of back down. Anytime, you know, they're being threatened with a lawsuit. Tez Walker of North Carolina being the great example, right? That Attorney General of North Carolina threatened a lawsuit. And when you know it, Tess Walker, the wide receiver for Carolina, was all of a sudden, poof, eligible. So, and we will include uh, Shane Metlin's uh, story in the comments so you can see all of it when he when he finally posts one. But this is a, a tweet. It was actually, we're recording this at about 20, uh, 20 after 8 Central Time. So he posted this about 10 of 7 Central Time. JMU's president and senior administration, upon advice of and in consultation with the attorney general's office and outside counsel, decided to hold off based on the results of last week's game and the timing involved. The university is continuing to pursue all avenues to get into a postseason bowl game. Well, the second, the last sentence is not true. I guess it's the second sentence. There's two sentences. <clears throat> I will read it again. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had my, my drink. It was behind my computer. Sorry. JMU's president and senior administration, upon advice of and in consultation with the attorney general's office and outside counsel, decided to hold off based on the results of last week's game and the timing involved. The university is continuing to pursue all avenues to get into a postseason bowl game. All right. Well, there's a little bit of I told you so in that, right? That, that JMU was only doing this because they were undefeated. Well, that doesn't really have anything to do with anything, to be honest with you, right? I know the New Year's Six Day Bowl and what Tulane accomplished last year is maybe the ultimate goal, but I kind of feel like they just want to play for a Sun Belt Championship. And whatever comes after that, fine. But they've earned the right to play in a Sun Belt Championship. They had it last year, and they have it this year, and that's what they should be doing. And last week's game doesn't have any bearing on that. They should be playing for... A Sun Belt Championship, should they beat Coastal Carolina this week? <laughs> I 
That's what it should be. Uh, and, and then you'd have, well, then you'd only have really two teams that could be in, you know, that would eliminate App State uh, because Coastal beat App, unless there's a different three-way tiebreaker. Anyway, so all of a sudden now that they're, they lost, and the timing has to be, well, there's Thanksgiving, there's a holiday. So I, I, is the federal buildings closed on Friday? I don't know. And you need to make a decision fast, right? This was all up against the clock because, you know, come Saturday after the games, the team is going to know who's playing in the Sunbelt Championship game. That's the last thing they're going to do is, you know, JMU beats Coastal Carolina and App State beats Georgia Southern. And all of a sudden, App State wakes up Monday morning or gets to lunch at noon and says, nope, we invoked, uh, you know, whatever injunction and we're allowing JMU to play. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> not. You know, could you imagine that? I'm surprised at the reaction from JMU, but boy, if they did that, it would not go over well in the Sun Belt. So, and I don't think a court is going to do that either, right? Then it's too late, right? Once the games have been decided on Saturday, it, it, it's too late to decide because, you know, as soon as that happens, and I presume it's going to be Troy is going to, is right now in line to, uh, is in line to host, right? I mean, they're probably already planning on it right now, but, you know, that would change if, I don't know, today, later today, that, you know, someone decided that JMU was going to host. They were eligible and they were going to host. But why would they pull out all of a sudden? There needs to be something more going on here, all right? I'm not quite sure, right? Is the Virginia AG, you know, was he... um was that Jason Myers? Is he that uh, grandstanding, you know, trying to win political points? Even if you lose, which everybody expects that you would, right? Nobody really expects this to happen. I was a little bit surprised that the NCAA turned him down with game day there and everything like that. But nobody really expected them to win uh, the waiver for the second time. And I don't think anybody would expect them to win this. And so it's kind of false hustle on the AG and the JMU president to go ahead with it because people think they're going to lose. And at least you showed the effort to go and do it. Now you pull out, you know, don't tell me you got the, you know, the backs of your student athletes when at the last second you're saying, nope, we lost too bad. Almost blaming the kids. <laughs> I, 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 something's not quite right here. And again, I will copy and paste Shane's uh, article from the Daily News Record Sports when he does post it. And I'll put it in the comments. I'm sure you're going to see it before you ever get to me. Uh, but it's very, it's it's a very strange deal. There's something more going on here. There's some more political backroom dealing that's going on here that when we find out about it, if we find out about it, it's not going to go over well. That's kind of, there's some shady stuff going on. I don't know what it is, but it just feels like when the president of the school is involved and the AG is involved, there's more than meets the eye. This is not just about going to a bowl game. There's something more than that. And why you would stop at the last second when, again, you're probably going to lose anyways. Just lose. We did our best. We tried. We went through all avenues. You can't say you're pulling out of the lawsuit and then say, again, you know, that you're doing everything you can to the university is continuing to pursue all avenues to get into a postseason bowl game. No, you're not. You're not. You're not pursuing it. You, there's one way to pursue it right now, and you decided not to use that way. And you're just going to hold your breath, and apparently you won't have a problem. There's not enough six and six teams to get in, so you're going to get in to a rather, you know, low-level low level bowl which is fine, but it'd be nicer if it was, you know, at the level that JMU has played at this season. I don't know what's going on. It feels very odd. I love political intrigue, uh, but something, it feels like something shady behind the scenes is going on. And JMU 
somewhere along the way, may have been threatened. Maybe that's it. Like, if you do this, then this is going to happen, and then that won't happen type of deal. Something along those lines. I have no idea. I really don't. But I'm sure we'll find out one way or another. Or if we don't, I'm not, like Shane Metlin has asked to talk with the president of JMU, and he's turned him down. He can't get an interview, which is kind of odd. You'd think you'd be able to, at a, pro, at a public university, you'd think you'd be able to, you know, talk to the president, uh, you know, didn't seem, wouldn't seem to be that big a deal. I understand that he's busy, but you wouldn't think that would be all, uh, you know, wouldn't be the most difficult. I've had the president of Louisiana on my radio show, although not recently, but I've had him on uh, uh, more than once. Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's take a time out. When we come back, let's talk about those 12 bowl teams uh, potentially from the Sun Belt, And that is an outstanding year for a Sun Belt of football. Let me tell you about prize picks. Boom. Prize picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. We're the easiest and most, most exciting way to play DFS. And it's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in prize picks is the most fun i've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season and now i can play during basketball season too you just select two or more players pick more or less on their projected stats and place your entry for example all right you could take steph curry more than 29 points and nikola Jokic more than 10 rebounds or joe burrow more than two passing touchdowns and travis kelsey more than 75 receiving yards although obviously burrow is out Testing my skills on prize picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Prize picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, prize picks discount select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. Prize picks now offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your accounts this football season. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, Dave Schultz, locked on Sunbelt, your team every day. Uh, in case you're wondering about uh, the uh, episodes coming up, we will be in Louisville, Kentucky. All right, so. We'll be doing Thanksgiving there, but we should still have podcasts uh, for you. Uh, I'm thinking about doing one on Thursday, but maybe we just skip Thursday and go right to Friday and preview Fridays uh, and, and Saturday's actions on Friday. Okay. Uh, also, we are above 800 subscribers. So 801, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, keep on you know, getting those uh, audio downloads as well, uh, wherever you get them. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, really appreciate it. Please like and share all the YouTube stuff. It is a big help. Hopefully, we'll get to 1,000 subscribers uh, by the end of the year. Uh, all right, your team every day, Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. I am Dave Schultz. We've been talking about this, uh, these bowl games, and it's been really impressive, right? We have right now, technically, so we're not going to include JMU, because they have to wait, all right, although they are technically eligible. You have eight teams that are eligible to go bowling, all right? And that does not include JMU. All right, so you have Coastal Carolina, one, App State, two, Georgia Southern, three, Georgia State, four, Troy, five, South Alabama, six, Arkansas State, six, Texas State, I'm sorry, South Alabama, six, Arkansas State 7, Texas State 8. All right? All of those are already going bowl. Okay. Then you have uh, you have old ODU, Old Dominion, Marshall, and UL, all with wins this week, and no one's playing each other. They can all go. Turns out all three of those teams are playing at home. Cajuns have ULM. Cajuns are a 13-point favorite. That doesn't mean anything uh, lately to them. 
although they did cover against Troy, oddly enough. Uh, they were big time favorites against Southern Miss and uh, favored on the road against Arkansas State and lost both those ball games. Uh, Monroe has had a really tough season. All right, have not won since September. Uh, it's been a minute since they've lost by single digits. Uh, they had two brutal losses. Uh, App State and Texas State by one maybe w- could have turned their season around, but they lost both of those. I can tell you, and I may have mentioned this otherwise, but here in Lafayette, they've seen this movie before where they need to beat ULM. They should beat ULM and they don't beat ULM. I have confidence they're going to beat ULM and it'll probably be by more than one score. I would not change the coach, Terry Bowden. He wants to be there. That's a different story and maybe a different time for a different podcast. Um, if the Cajuns are a little bit healthy, all right, like we're not down to quarterback number four, they should win this football game. And they should win it, I want to say relatively easily because ULM's played hard. But I think the Cajuns win this ball game and go bowling. Okay, that's one. ODU, I think they're going to do the same. ODU is actually favored by three. I mean, whatever got into Georgia State and Georgia Southern at the end of the season, they've been going in the wrong direction, right? Georgia State hasn't won since they beat the Cajuns, and they were fortunate to get that one. Although, give it up to Gavin Pringle. He made a heck of a catch. But they got blown out by Georgia Southern after that. They got blown out by JM. JMU after that. They got blown out by App State after that. And by no surprise, they got blown out by LSU after that. It has gone in the wrong direction for Georgia Southern or Georgia State, I should say, and Georgia Southern for that fact of the matter. But Georgia State is already bowl eligible and Old Dominion, I'm pretty sure the over under for Old Dominion like was one and a half. Which, by the way, if you took the over, you won a long time ago. So good job by Ricky Ronnie. Uh, really, really uh, impressed with what they've done. Kind of been in and out with the quarterbacks. Um, they, there are some games there that they could have lost and won. And there's a few ball games that they should have uh, won that they lost. I think the Marshall one was probably where it was. Could have won, but couldn't get a stop. Kept on coming, though. Uh, should have beaten Wake. Could have lost to the Cajuns. We don't know what would have happened there. I do know if the Cajuns had scored a touchdown there, they would have gone for an extra point. They would not have gone for two. I do know that. Um, so who knows what would have happened there, but I you can't count on that. But there's some other ball games that, you know, ODU, like the um, Coastal Carolina ball game, they should have won. Could have won James Madison. So there, and then they could have lost a couple others. You know, that's the thing about ODU. For the most part, they don't get blown out. Liberty's very good. They lost 38 to 10 uh, to Liberty. They beat Georgia Southern. I think they're going to beat Georgia State. I think ODU's going bowling. The big question I have is can Marshall at home beat Arkansas State? Arkansas State is coming off a huge win, right? Like not only big win to go bowling, But big win, putting up 77 points. You can see Arkansas State falling a little flat, I guess. Marshall needs it. Cole Pennington came back down to earth. He played okay in the game against Georgia Southern. I think he made one mistake, maybe one interception um, against Georgia Southern. Sorry. And, you know, they won the ball game, so it may get a little bit overlooked. The defense right, forced Georgia Southern into field goals instead of touchdowns. Well, now you have uh, Marshall at home needing a home win. They're actually favored. That's a little bit surprising. They're two and a half point favorites. I would not be surprised if Arkansas, say Arkansas State wins this one, but I'm going to take Marshall because I want to see a dozen Sunbelt teams in a bowl game. All right. Let's take a time out. We'll come back. We'll wrap things up after uh, this. I'll talk more about how impressive it is to, to have 12 teams in a bowl game. Are they going to play each other? Can they separate them all? Let's tell you a little bit. That's not right. About LinkedIn. There we go. 
These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Dave Schultz, Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. I guess there is still an outside. You wonder why Troy is not. I guess if Troy takes down Southern Miss and wins the Sunbelt Championship, maybe Tulane loses in there somewhere along the way. If they could get, I don't know if they could get a New Year's Six Day Bowl. Uh, let's see what we, um, see if we can find Brett McMurphy's bowl. I mean, none of these are, this has got to be really tough, right? (laughs) Bull, bull, uh, projections. All right. These are really hard. All right. And you got to start from the back because that's where the, um, that's where the Sun Belt is going to be, right? So Marshall, he's got Marshall in, all right? Uh, the famous Toastery Bowl in Charlotte taking, in, uh, taking on NIU. In the New Orleans Bowl, and I think this would be a well of a ball game, by the way, Troy taking on Liberty. Please give me some of that. I don't know how many people would be there. I would presume a bunch of people from Troy and maybe some people from Liberty. Uh, maybe it'll be a big crowd. It would be a heck of a ball game. I'll tell you that uh, right uh, now. All right, Georgia State taking on a WKU in the Myrtle Beach Bowl. All right, in Conway. So Georgia State going to play another bowl game in Coastal Carolina. You got the Scooters Coffee. We just got one of those here in Lafayette. Anybody have any of that? I've not had that yet. I'm not the biggest of all coffee drinkers, but always willing to try. Texas State taking on Minnesota. All right, so Minnesota's already played one Sunbelt team this year. They beat the Cajuns. So all of a sudden we have, all right, so that's uh, one, two, and I missed a couple, three, four. Uh, Toledo, whose coach is in the mix for Syracuse, potentially, taking on App State in the Cure Bowl in Orlando. Coastal Carolina, a huge underdog at Texas Tech. They can have Shreveport. They can have the Independence Bowl. Go at it. So in the first one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight bowls. There are six teams. One, two, three, four, five, six teams. No, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm counting that wrong. Oh, no. Okay, so it is six. All right, it is six. Okay. Uh, my understanding is that there would be a no math. All right, go to the Boca Raton Bowl. Uh, Georgia Southern going to take on Boise State. In the Birmingham Bowl, Maryland coming down to take on South Alabama. What a huge potential home field advantage that would be for the Jaguars, if that was the case. Uh, He does have JMU going to the Camellia Bowl in Montgomery, Alabama. All right. Not that close to Harrisonburg, but much closer than it would be to uh, Wyoming. All right. Uh, and that's who he's got there. So what what uh, what do we have there? We had six, seven, eight, nine. Still going. Arkansas State taking in the Ventures Bowl. That was the Lensing Tree Bowl, but now it's a Ventures Bowl. So Arkansas State would be heading back to uh, Mobile to take on Jacksonville State. That could be a good ball game. Now take the over in that one. Uh, he does have Louisiana going to the First Responder Bowl in Dallas, Texas, taking on. Air Force, that could be an interesting ball game with the Cajuns uh, defense. So what we have there, we had, uh, let's see here, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And where is, did I miss the 12? Oh, he's got ODU losing. He does not have ODU. 
No ODU. All right. Does not have that one. Okay. I think ODU does it. I think ODU gets it done. There's no ODU. So 11 out of 12. All right. Uh, so that is a lot of bowl games for the Sun Belt. Be really proud to get all, you know, to get 12 of your 14 teams in. It's really good. Really good. All right. All right. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, I will put uh, Shane Metlin's article in the comment section. Um, he's the one who reported it. And if you are, I don't know if you joined in late, I guess, or skip to the end. <laughs> I'm not sure why you would do that. Again, uh, Shane Metlin um, from the Daily News record reporting that apparently JMU is pulling out of the lawsuit. JMU's president and senior administration upon advice of and in cons consultation with the attorney general's office and outside counsel decided to hold off based on the results of last week's game and the timing involved. The university is continuing to pursue all avenues to get into a postseason bowl game. Interesting, interesting. His article will be in the comments section. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We'll take Thursdays off. We'll take Thursday off. I deserve it. We'll be back on Friday to uh, preview this weekend's matchups. All right. Until that time, thanks so much for tuning in and watching and listening to Lockdown Sunbelt, your team, every day. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody.